No one can stop death, except Cocoon. Cocoon stops it pretty easily. When the Tormented Souls come out, you just straight up drop it, bam, there's your counter. Right away, I got you guys. Easy mode. You toppled all my stitches early on, we'll talk to you. <laughs> Alright guys, we're getting ready for the second map here in this Best of Five series. The Battleground Choice is going to be up the Dignitas, as Alta Hero and crew will decide to go ahead and go with first pick. So Cursed Hollow is it. Cursed Hollow is going to be the map. This is also the battleground where against Liquid, they didn't do too badly. They actually looked okay until the mid-game where they lost one big fight that started to snowball the game a lot. But in the series against Liquid, on uh, the first two maps, I think they were actually able to keep up until the mid-game where there was always one crucial fight that they lost and from uh, where it started to take control. And as they themselves said, let's just ignore the third map they played against Team Liquid because that didn't go too well at all. Yeah, that was what, almost a five-level uh, lead at one point for Team Liquid. Not almost. It was, it was it a five-level five lead. lead. It was pretty devastating. Yeah. Poor good guys having a hard time. But they're here against Ingtoss, and they held pretty well there towards the late game where we saw the Vikings composition start to pull away. Going into game number two, they still have to worry about that type of composition, though. Ah, but they're on this battleground. Uh, global comps and even Vikings are very viable here. Yeah, so we could see something similar, I suppose. But I don't even remember if we have seen anyone except for Team Liquid pull the Vikings off on this map. Old Synergy, but they're no longer in the HEC, sadly. Yeah. But they did it a few times with the false stats. So, we'll see if that will be the mix-up as we move into Cursed Hollow. First ban will be going over to Team Good Guys. All right, let's see how exactly they're going to play it here. I would definitely like to see Malthiel in some kind of setup, but I, he might even be banned out. But for now, of course, we're talking about the priority picks on the map once again. We're having uh, Uta, Genji, Uta immediately being banned. Still all the way up at the top. The Dehaka could be an issue for players, but it's more traditional bans. Uta and Genji out, and that means we have a pretty good chance of actually getting Malthiel. Illidan, though, will be the first pickup as Team Good Guys will pick it up. Is that is that Auntie on that Illidan? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll see Auntie playing the Illidan here. And it'll be the first pickup for Team Good Guys. Dignitas, how do you respond? That's actually a really good question because if you don't take the Abatha, I know a team that would love to have him. Does it start with a T and end with <laughs> Eam Good Guys? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> How did you know? I don't know, man. Just sometimes I have these hunches. I just I just pounce on them, you know? Like a tiger. <laughs> yeah. Or an Illidan. Ah. Oh, Gazlo. Uh. Gazlo doesn't pounce on anybody. Everyone pounces on Gazlo. No, you, you pounce on the, the idea of uh, what could I pick here? Gazlo. Dominated. Easy wins, easy victories. So Digging Toss, a new rack is up, and we've seen them move into a new rack very often, especially at the MSB. I have to say, I'm really happy that Stukov isn't a specialist because. <laughs> I'm still gonna play him. I'm going the arm push nope. the other way. I think the triple knockback is probably gonna be the competitive yeah. pickup, but that arm, dude, seems fun. Okay, so here we have the Dehaka. As mentioned, if they don't pick him, then the good guys will. So instead, Dignitas is saying, hey, the Haka, he's more or less a given. We need that side soak, especially if Illidan decides to go into the hunt. We need something that can compensate for that a yeah. little bit. And let's just play the Abathur with him. He's amazing as is. And now, of course, on the other side, the good guys still, still need their support for Illidan. I would say it's fairly likely that we're going to have a double support here. Yeah, I think Rhaegar is pretty much a given most times. Oh, it goes into Oriel and Tassadar, though, for the good guys. And this is a cool option. Because this puts them in a spot where they can still move into Vala or even Lenara and just have outstanding team fight. You get heals moving in like crazy, you get that battery moving forward, you can keep building alive, but also you have the backline that shell out damage too. Yeah, so the, the one thing with this that I'm waiting for is how Dignitas reacts in terms of CC because they have the Haka already. Mm -hmm. What else are they going to play here? Are we going to see the JPL Meridian, for example, that they could bust out? Arthas comes to mind as well. And then we're talking about potential bans for the good guys again, because I think one of the two heroes would be something they would probably like to get away with. I think they ban Arthas good guys. They kind of have to, especially if you can being Dignitas. They're the one team that consistently goes back to Arthas as a counter to multiple melee dives in some way or some form. We'll see if they go down that route. While Dignitas, on their side, they're looking to ban out the Anubarak. Which makes sense. If you don't want to pick the Anubarak yourself, Ooh. okay, v switching over to Vala. Maybe they decided to take the Anubarak for themselves after all. Because that's the one thing that I would definitely do if I was them. Getting the Anubarak in this particular setup is great. You have the stuns against Illidan. 
if you don't plan on taking him, then yeah, by all means, ban him, since that would be a fantastic hero for the good guys to play with Illidan. But and that goes back to our point uh, here. The good guys now have to decide what they want to ban out, and if they don't, the Arthas and Anubak are both open. They get whatever option they want to go into. Yeah. All right, we'll see what team good guys wants to get rid of. Uh, there's always a possibility of choking out support that you don't want to have. Uh, but with them not having very much CC, I don't think you go down the route of trying to get like a rid of a Rhaegar or something. The thing is, do you actually mind if Dignitas gets an Uberak here? I mean, he is still the best tank that we have by far, but if you think about, if you think about it, what do they cocoon? Because we saw in the last game that just because you have a cocoon available against such a combi, you're not necessarily guaranteed to then take it since Oriel can heal, you have the Tassadar shield, Tassadar can help burst down the cocoon as well. So you can either try and cocoon one of the supports, you can try and cocoon Illidan, but if there is an immediate reaction, it's pretty rough, especially if the good guys, for example, pick up the Li Ming and burst down a cocoon with a disintegrate. You can cocoon the Tassadar though, right? But, I mean, you're talking about disintegrate and such, yeah. but the Tassar would be cocooned there, and they can turn around and focus down the Illidan. Uh, or even the Ariel if she goes to move forward at all. Granted, the thought process is probably some good guys are going to move into that Lenara in that fourth or fifth pick, and she does a yeah. decent job of shelling it down. The thing is, if you go into the Li Ming on the side of the good guys, you might have a problem with the hope on Ariel, so you have yeah. probably put your hopes more into Illidan. So Lunara would probably be the better choice for you. But there it is. So Nuburak is taken. We have Cassia now as well. And now the question is just what's going to be that one hyper carry for the good guys? Lunara is what we would jump to immediately. Against Cocoon, you would probably prefer Li Ming, but she doesn't synergize that well with Aureal compared to Lunara. Vala is banned out. I'm trying to think. I feel like with Cassie even picked up here, you put yourself in a really weird spot. Lunara still does pretty decent because of poison damage, but her initial auto attacks are still actual auto attack damage, so Cassie does well here. The charge would also show pretty well. We'll see what team guys moves into as they pick up stitches. And what is your fifth pickup? Lenara, okay. Lenara. So we're gonna do it. Yeah, that makes the most sense. I mean, it's the best way for you to generate hope now for Oriel. Have the Tassada there too to help out a little bit. And Dignitas will have to make that quick jump into the backline if they want to kill something. If they can lock someone down if they get a good drag in and Cassia times her fend properly, then you can do so much damage with that though. How are you it seems like it's really difficult to kill Cassia here. Ilden will be kited I mean, by Cassia pretty well. Don't forget that they are very melee heavy. Yeah, that's so true. So you can actually start poking at them quite a bit. I feel it puts more pressure onto Illidan than anyone else. Lunara should be able to poke against this for a long, long time. But if Illidan engages too early, too deep, then he can be in immediate trouble. Just one lockdown in the fend, and if Oriel and Tassada aren't ready to immediately protect him, then you are running into issues. But the good Hello. guys definitely have a setup that can help them to take that down. Malph will be the final pickup for Team Dignitas. Even with the adjustments on Malph no cleanse being available yeah. and such, Bakery still believes in his boy. Yeah, he does. And uh, with this, the question, of course, once again, are we going to see that uh, counter against the poison damage on the side of Lunara? Would make a lot of sense here. But they have a very, very melee heavy setup with this, so that would work well. Yeah, I'll see you in the tranquility. Could be coming yeah. out for them. So, Team Ding Toss versus Team Good Guys. I actually like what Good Guys has drafted overall. I'm a bit worried on them getting the Cassia kills. It seems like it might be a bit difficult uh, for them to get that full engagement. Leaping Strike could be a possibility to help finish that off. But Team Ding Toss, if you look at them in terms of macro control, they have that Dahaka and that Abather, which can be very oppressive to play against. Illidan, maybe going into the hunt, will be able to offset that slightly, but I think at some point there is going to be a breaking point. I'm actually curious to see if he takes Hunt. Hunt is the current meta. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, a metamorphosis would not be bad here because there's so much that you would like to dodge. Because yeah. if your opponent locks you down once and goes in with a Cassia, you're in trouble. And you're going to be the primary target. If you dodge that attempt, then you can really drive the team fight after that. Question is simply, do you lose out on too much side soak if you do that? So, Or how do you engage in the fights? We have seen it, for example, Illidan players engaging into a battle without the hunt and then using it towards the later end of the battle just to, ha to chase someone down and finish a kill. So both of that would work here. That's a good point, too. And also the Illidan and the hunt, it's actually very easy to read that and drop a blind right on top of him and just finish up with the auto attacks afterwards from Cassia. I think I agree with you, actually. I would like to see meta here a little bit more. Uh, Stitches in particular, he's going to have to have some decent hooks. I hope he hits that Mount Fury, and that's the main target you want to land it on so Lenar can really start to burn out that damage and get rid of him overall. So Stitches going to have to have a solid game overall. Uh, I'm just trying to think. 
I, I'm still leaning towards Deacon Dignitas simply because it's digging against good guys, and it's by a heavy margin, I think, for me. 60 to 40 uh, pretty heavily with Dig just having the macro overall. Yeah, I mean, they are the favorite going into that series. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. The draft, on the other hand, is something where the good guys, if they gain them some momentum, if they bring the pain there, they definitely can. They just need Illidan, ideally, to create some space for Lunara. If they that actually... works in the fights, then they have a solid draft. And you forget about the Tessadar force wall into the Oral Detainment Strike. Could yeah. be enough for Cassia to get her trait taken off completely and then burn Hook, her down. Force wall, you have so much lockdown in that setup. There is definitely enough, and it's hard to get away from that. So. Yeah, the more you look at it, the more it looks better for Team Good Guys. What do you guys think at home? Who do you think is going to walk away with the victory here? Can Team Good Guys get on the scoreboard against Dignitas? It's a bit of a hard matchup for them, but they're definitely bringing it all on the table here. Hit us up on Twitter. Use the hashtag HUC. Of course, Heroes Esports. We love to hear from every one of you guys. It's always great to see your comments. Uh, it was actually kind of funny. I was watching chat earlier, and uh, the squid arms kept calling yeah. out there when Stukov was brought up there. It's uh, That's a new one. Especially when they showed the ults and uh, abilities. So it was kind of fun to see that, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That arm is going to be so powerful uh, when it eventually comes <laughs> out. Uh, in terms of boss control, is there anything that we're missing out on? I think Team Good Guys actually has a better boss rush, too. They have the Illidan. They can run in. They can actually peel off Tassadar and Illidan and do a boss at any point. Yeah, but the one problem I have with that is that Dignitas knows that, too. And they will try to sniff that out. So we are probably going to see them quite often poke their head in when they don't see all heroes on the map, just see, okay, are they maybe doing it? Sure. And we've seen a lot of these early games just completely flip when such an attempt has been spotted out. You take the boss away from them and get a kill, and all of a sudden all your effort is gone not, and you just turn it around and uh, take the boss yourself and uh, run with it. So need to be careful. They can definitely do it, but hopefully they are more so focusing on it if they either have perfect vision on the opponent's team or they get a kill. Well, the match is ready. A game on number two coming your way. Ding and toss, hoping to take on the good guys, maybe grab a 2-0 lead, or we could have the good guys tie it up one to one. Game number two in the series. The good guys are behind in the match. Dignitas has taken the lead after our earlier map. And now once again to the left, and Malfurion played by Bakery. Mena on Abatha. We have Zelia. Haka, Cassia played by Snitch, and JPL on Anubarak. On the right side, in the red, Ante Hero will be on Illidan, Cronaz will be on Oriol, Zay on Tassadar, BKB looking to hook, and Raid Boss on Lenara. So let's find out how exactly this is going to work out for the good guys here. They said from the start, we are here to improve, we're here to learn, we're up against a tough opponent that is going to be rough to beat. Let's just try our best and uh, hopefully walk away with a map win or two. Dignitas has so far looked very dominant with a great draft on our first map, Towers of Boom. And, well, for now, let's see how this is going to work out with Lunara being the main damage dealer on the side of the good guys. Interesting enough, Lenara playing safe in the top lane as they wait for the waves to pop in. Snitch and Bakery will be here in a match against Ante Hero with Daniel coming in for the engage. He'll come out and drop the Burrow charge. Ante Hero will dodge out overall, but finally gets locked down here with that root. Yeah, initially a good move against JPL's attempt to stun him out, but now the kill after all. Also, good attempt by Dignitas. Early pressure already. Talking pressure, we have at the top lane Lunara and Oriel positioned against the Haka. So both of the teams have a lane where they are very heavily dominating and attempting to take down the structures. But getting the early kill against Illidan was of course great for Dignitas to take some of the momentum away from the good guy. Yep, this is going to force Illidan to peel off and head somewhere else too. Illidan just does not want to be in that lane. Against a Cassia and a Malfurion, you're not going to get too much done. Your wave clear is kind of mad overall. So he decided to head to the top lane to help out his teammates. They'll go ahead and clear out this turret. Two of them taken out. But this just enables Malfurion and Cassia in that bottom lane to keep pushing forward. That's kind of the trade off that you're going to see on Curse Hollow pretty often. Yeah, it's definitely true that now Snitch and Bakery are having a good time down to the bot lane. So the UK Dream Team is currently doing what they do best, wrecking structures. But the problem is that at the top you will never be able to actually defend this. So the Haka can just try and soak the experience. But this is, of course, going to be forfeit. Illidan alone is already fantastic on structures himself. But if you have then also the Lunara support and someone to heal you, there's no way. And they get the better trade even, since they already dropped the fort, whereas down to the bot lane, Dignitas is still busy. Yeah, Tassadar by himself has decent wave clear. He's able to keep up with the shields there and continue to keep that fort alive. And 
Team Dingtoss will do their best to push on that bottom right side, but with Zalea starting the Giants on this side over here, Anti Hero is going to come in for the engage, and they grab it. They're going to go ahead and start pushing in that top lane, and Dingtoss is just forced to give it up. Also, we have now Malfurion going to the Moonfire build. Full Moonfire on level 4 for the increased radius and mana reduction. So not going for Luan's Grace to help out with the roots, for example. Bakery, on the other hand, will still be able to get the Vibio. This one spawned in favor of Dignitas with the particular setup that they have here. But as you said, top lane, that's a very different story. We still have one of the Siege Giants that Zelia finally now drags in. But a tower has been lost, and a lot of the shots on the second tower has now fallen too. So they are starting to open up win condition if they're able to get the boss later on. Now, the beauty of the push here is even good, guys. This is actually an experienced lead moving towards seven already. Now, of course, this is something that can be expected against an Abba composition. You get a value somewhere on the battleground, and Team Good Guys does it in the top lane. They also got the massive invade but they have to keep this momentum going for level 10. They also have the first tribute, so it's all about continuing to move forward and save on top of those tribute spawns. There's a really important thing to note, by the way. Some people might look at this and they're saying like, ah, oh, yeah, Dignitas is just playing with their food. They are going to win the series anyways. Doesn't matter. It does very much matter because last season already we had the situation where at the end of the season when we talked about who would go to the playoffs, we had actually a lot of teams being on the exact same score and maps are even more important this season than they were last season. So every single map you take or lose matters in the end for the score. So Dignitas is definitely not looking at this saying, we can lose one. They will want to make this a 3-0. So uh, keep that really in mind when we're talking about the games here, because it might be early in phase two, but every single map you play matters because at the end you will regret it if you take it too lightly. Well, oh, Dignitas in the lead with tributes. We're hoping to maybe gain more here as they're pushing in that middle lane, using that Moonfire build, really trying to work forward here. JPL ha does have the interrupt. Oh, he actually doesn't get it, but he does get hooked. Gets hooked, and we are moving in straight again for another attempt to lock a target down, but they don't get that just yet. Kind of interested in why we didn't have the interrupt there from Dig. Team Good Guys responds with a boss rush here on the top right corner. They realize their opponent is engaged, and with the Wisp placement, they can tell that their opponents are coming in for the invade. It is about half health, and this is where it kind of gets wishy-washy. This Team Good Guys is going to go in for the fight. They turn around, they're on top of Snitch. They're going in, and this is still a fight without the copy on Abathar. One of the main reasons why the Good Guys are willing to take it. Zelia is a bit isolated. He tries to escape, but he will fall. Is going to be the victim. No chance for him to escape this one. A good kill for the Good guys and they can turn around towards the boss again to probably not really do it since Zelia can burrow in once more and they are focusing on the tribute first but Dignitas on the other hand is already at the bottom of the map trying to do their thing yeah good guys uh, can assume that Dignitas is probably doing this boss they did completely disappear they're not on the battleground they can do their own boss in the top right corner so interesting set of events for both of our players here as that invade just did not work out for Dignitas at all. Good guys grabbing a tribute. They are now ahead by one and also get a boss to push at top. That remember, they opened up earlier. Yeah. Exactly, so both of the lanes are open, but the big difference is that the good guys took down a tower already and have been uh, claiming uh, some of the hit points on the gate itself as well. So that's something that gives them a slight lead here, and they also overall have a composition that is just much better pushed through here. So I'm curious to see how Dignitas plays around this, especially since they will hit the level 10 a little bit later. Also, this is a really nice move by the good guys, just getting the camp. They should actually time it a bit. Yeah, get it to push right behind that do. boss there. They're weighing it out. Beautiful done. 10 to 10 here for our team. Zahaka pushing the bottom. After we've got you know, as well. Tribute does spawn, but good guys. It's putting it all on the line here. Realizing they don't need this tribute. Instead, they intend to get an advantage somewhere else by grabbing this keep. Can they get it? The question is, can they get it and defend their own? That's going to be the big one. But right now, they're actually looking good going for this. There's Abathur channeling the tribute. He's going to try and get that, making it a 2 for 2 Good guys at some point have to move away. Stitches already dragged by Zelia. Ege is out, gets the heal in. No, Stitches falls. Now, Furion gets hunted here on the left side. He's going to fall as well. Snitch trying to kite backwards. 
low on health. The drag does connect as Mane oh. is actually going to be able to grab that there with the ultimate evolution Daka. Yeah, there's the kill against Illidan. That was an important oh. one, but Cassia also down, and the fight still continues. Raid boss chunking away with Lunara. He needs to be careful. Mane is still looking for the drag here with a copy, but JPL is low and down. They're going for Zelia. They have a chance to get another kill here by Tassada. Falls first of all. Lunara attempting to get away here, and the boss at the bot lane has been defended against. So the good guys getting out of this, taking the keep and not losing their own, but they will lose Lunara eventually. Zelia is angry, man. Here he's slashing, and he gets a final kill pickup. It was important to get the Illidan kill there from Team Ding Toss. If Illidan would have stayed alive there, there could have been a point where this core could have been taking damage. Team Good Guys loses in the Illidan early side, eventually lost that fight overall, but still. Great showing here from Team Good Guys. That pressure on the top has netted them a keep, and their keep in the bottom right has been defended. Yeah, the double Dehaka here, just getting these drags in that did so much work. And the kill against Zay shouldn't really have happened. Zayla did a great job here, having the Abathur support, of course, as well. Killing the Tassada was absolutely crucial. Great boss, as we could see there, and falling later on as, as well. Here comes the Puric Bile, though. Decent spot here for them. Cocoon already being used. Illidan is in hunt range now. Can use that. This is a curse tribute. It's a curse tribute for both of our teams here. Krona is in the front side, and that Cocoon has been utilized. Here comes the hunt. They're diving on Snitch. Snitch being forced down. He is low on health. Can he get through? He's trying here. Finally, he gets blown up. But Mane on the back right is working and damaging it, whoever he can. On the other hand, we have Antihero really giving Bakery a run for his money with the Illidan, always putting him under pressure and forcing him back, trying to zone with the roots here. But this is going to be a curse. The good guys are still 13 versus 13 in levels. They have five kills against six, but they have that curse. And they are just moving past it. They keep, they don't even care. They're trying to move in right away and see if they can't get a kill here. They're trying to get Bakery. If they can kill Malfurion here, they'd be in a great spot to keep him forward. Bakery gets away though. Nice kill there from JPL in particular with Snitch spawning now. They will have the tools to help fight their opposing members. Team Good Guys, however, grouping up in the middle, breaking down forts, getting that experience. The hook missing out sadly there for Good Guys. Bot lane also heavily pressured by Wave and Mercenary camps. But the real action is still over here in the middle as we're seeing the towers fall. There's another 30 seconds on the curse. They have a great chance of getting a second keep. The hunt comes out. It's going to be on Snitch. The cocoon comes out instantly as well. Snitch trying to retreat there, but the force wall was holding him in wow. place. Zelia coming in, but too late. Good guys definitely showing their skills off right now, but a great drag from Zelia once again against Anti Hero. Zelia still low, though. Anti is alive and got the shield from Tassadar, and it looks like he is going to die. Zelia is still running around here, but Mene comes in, and all of a sudden, Anti Hero is in trouble, but they go for the core. Team Good Guys looking for a victory here against Dignitas. The core starting to fall with an Illidan on top of it. It's looking like they might be able to. The hook comes out on Bakery. BKB as well, bringing out all the damage, and Good Guys will gain a victory and tie up the series against Dignitas. TGG with a win on Curse. Hollow taking the game off the that alone is already a success for them. Yes. If they can snowball that, that would be insane if they get more than a map. But just getting that one map of Dignitas is huge. And the Illidan composition worked out so well for them. I'm really surprised to see a ban on him later on. It allowed for them to really get advantage in the early game and keep pushing forward against that Apather composition in particular. And you, in general, we're starting to get our teams into a point where they realize early game is important. We got to break things down, gain advantages somewhere. They went as far as to a keep wall, which was impressive to see from a team that is new to the HEC. Lunara is just absolutely fantastic also in these fights, keeping her alive. Yeah. And we saw a lot of really clutch moments where Illidan was safe, where Lunara was safe, where Tassel and also Oriel were really on point and kept these heroes and therefore the fight alive. But Lunara got so much damage in this game. She really did. And let's go ahead and get ready for game number three. We'll be right back after our commercial break, but we'll see Dignitas face off against the good guys.